In this video, we're going to relate mean and standard deviation to uh, median and IQR. So mean is a measure of, uh, of center, and standard deviation is a measure, measure of spread. Uh, likewise, median is a measure of center, and IQR, inner quartile range, is a measure of, uh, of spread. So we're looking at uh, the height of U.S. males 18 years and older. That approximately follows a normal model with a mean of 69.4 inches and a standard deviation of 31, uh, sorry, 3.1 inches. What would be the IQR or the interquartile range? All right. So um, the median and mean should be approximately the same. If something follows a normal model, it'd be unimodal and symmetric. And if that's the case, mean and median should be pretty much the same. Uh, however, standard deviation and the IQR uh, are not necessarily, or are not the same thing. All right, so what we ought to know about normal models is uh, the empirical rule, or the 68-95-99-7 rule, uh, which would say that 68% of the distribution for a normal model falls within one standard deviation of the mean. So one standard deviation below the mean is 66.3, and uh, one standard deviation above the mean 72.5. So 68% of U.S. males' heights should approximately fall between 66.3 inches and 72.5 inches. Um, if we're looking for the IQR, we're not looking for the middle 68%, we're looking for the middle 50%. So I would think that we'd be looking something somewhat around here. So. Uh, cut off just a little bit of that middle 68 to get the middle 50%. The question is, what is this height and what's that height? Now, this height happens to be at Q1 and this height would be at Q3, quartile 1 and quartile 3, because the quartiles divide the data set or divide the uh, distribution into four equal parts. So 25% of the data would be here, 25% from Q1 to the middle and the median, and then 25% from the middle median to Q3, and then 25% above. So this would give us the middle 50%. But how do we find Q1 and Q3? We can use the normal model and z-scores to do so. The question I have in my mind to answer this question, or to, to solve this problem is, what z-score has 25% of the distribution below it. So what is the z-score for Q1? I'm going to the calculator for that. All right, I'm going to use the distributions menu, the inverse normal function. And we're going to find the z-score that uh, leaves 0.25% or has a 0.25 uh, probability of it. And we get that that is about negative uh, 0.6749. 449. And likewise, what would be the z-score for Q3? It has 25% of the data. Now, we don't actually have to go to the calculator for this because the normal model is symmetric. So that would just be 6.67449. Uh, uh, however, on the calculator, uh, we would have to keep in mind that uh, it gives us the uh, shaded region only to the left. So I wouldn't be able to type in 0.25, I'd have to point in, type in 0.75 to get that same value, which I already knew. Okay, so now that I have those z-scores, I can use z-scores when I know the mean and standard deviation to determine uh, a specific uh, x value, or in this case q1 and q3. So we're looking at the z-score and the z-score formula. The uh, data point of interest minus the mean divided by the standard deviation equals the z-score. So we set that up to solve for q1 we would get 67.3, approximately 67.3 inches, and a similar formula to solve for Q3. The z-score for 25% of the data above it, 
our distribution above it, and then Q3 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation is equal to that. So we get about 71.5 inches. So if Q3 is 71.5 and Q1 is 67.3, to find the IQR, we would just subtract. get an IQR of approximately 4.2 inches. Alright, so that's how you can use the uh, information uh, mean and standard deviation to find the uh, IQR for a, a normally distributed um, distribution. This wouldn't work if it wasn't symmetric and unimodal, but in this case, since it is, we can do that.